Shabooli. Hey. Bam, bam, bam. Mute everything else. That should work. What's up, sons? It's Blind Ride with Seven Tech once again, and today we have yet another Talking Head video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the specifications for the new line of GPUs from NVIDIA. They are known as the RTX A series. There is the A5000, A6000, and A4000. We're specifically going to be looking at the A5000 because we are going to be comparing what its possible hash rate could be on ETH in relation to the RTX 3080. And we'll talk a little bit more about why we chose that GPU right after a word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is CDK Deals. To get great deals on Windows 10 Pro keys, check out the links in the description. To activate, it's as simple as going to cdkdeals.com using the link in the description and then searching for Windows 10 Pro. From here, you just need to click buy now. Then you can sign up for a quick and easy account don't forget to type in your promo code, which is SOT20, and click Submit Order. From here, you can pay with FastPay, PayPal, credit card, etc. Once you have completed your purchase, head on over to the User Center. Once processing is complete, you will be able to get your key to activate Windows. Your key will be located in your account under My Purchased Orders. You will click View Keys and Codes, Click get the key, and then you will copy the code. Next, head on over to Windows, search in Cortana for activation settings. Click on change product key, and use control V to paste the code into the box. Click next, then click activate, and your copy of Windows will be activated. No more pesky watermark. To get 20% off your Windows 10 Pro purchase, don't forget to check out the affiliate link down in the description and use promo code SOT20 when signing up. Welcome back. So hopping right into it, the reason we're looking at the A5000 and not the A6000, which would be the more expensive version, is because the memory bandwidth and speeds are the same between the A5000 and the A6000. Now, if you guys recall, we did do predictions for the RX 6700 XT back in the day, and just based off of memory bandwidth speed, we were pretty much spot on. As you can see here, this video was posted on March 3rd, 2021, and we predicted that the hash rate for the RX 6700 XT would be 47.25 mega hash. And well, I gotta say, we hit that nail on the head. So let's go ahead and do these same numbers for the A5000. Now, once again, the reason we are doing the A5000 is because the memory is bandwidth is the same. We have 768 gigabytes a second. If we take a look at the RTX 3080, we have 760.3 gigabytes per second. So what else makes this card different? Well, let's go through some of the specifications. It is gonna be amp here. And so that will be the eight nanometer manufacturing process with 28.3 billion transistors. There's the die size. We have 8,192 CUDA cores, 256 tensor cores, 64 RT cores, which is for ray tracing. And you can kind of just go down and see that it has the rest of the standard specs that you would expect. The only other thing that we would really want to take a look at here is going to be power consumption. And the power consumption is pretty good. We're looking at 230 watts on the power. So if we compare that to the 3080, the TDP was 320 watts. All right, and that's quite a bit of a big difference. So if we're talking about the difference in power consumption there when mining Ethereum, we should see a pretty big drop. So we ran it through a percent calculator and 230 watts of 320 is 71%. And so if we run that with the current mining performance of the 3080 at its peak being around 240 watts, we should see a decrease in power consumption down under 200 watts for this particular GPU. So that alone is a big, big deal. Now, the reason why it is consuming less power is because it is meant 
for, of course, servers. And so if you're racking these in servers, it's the same reason it's gonna have a blower card because the airflow is going to be pushing through the case. And so they wanna make sure that blower is blowing the air from the GPU that's hot outside the back of the case. And you obviously also just get a lot hotter in those server cases. So you typically want to keep the power consumption down. And that also helps, of course, when people are selling it to data centers that want to keep their power costs low, just like miners do. So that's a good thing. But let's go ahead and get into the hash rate. So if we take a look at the hash rate and we are looking at 768 gigabytes a second versus 760 gigabytes per second, that puts us at about 101% of what the 3080 would be, which means you are really only gonna get about one to two mega hash additional in this particular setup. You are gonna be getting, you know, something incredible. So depending on your setup, I noticed that I sit right around 97 mega hash a second on most 3080s. 24 seven, you can get a little higher over hundred to 103 and 107. I think the highest I've gotten was like 110 mega hash a second, but you start running into some stability issues. So I wanted to try to stay as conservative as possible. So we would really be at about 98 mega hash a second. So we can also run this through what to mine, correct? So if we head on over to what to mine, and we go ahead and take a look at the difference here in profitability. Let's just say 97 mega hash a second at 240 watts would be about $8 and 30 cents a day on Ethereum. And then if we did 98 mega hash a second at 175 watts, we would be at $8 and 54 cents a day after power. So at the end of the day, what you could potentially be looking at with the A5000 versus the A6000 is an additional 20 cents per day after power cost, which is nothing to sneeze at. Now, pricing is gonna be anywhere between two and $3,000 though. So at that price point, you are looking at bumping up to something like the 3090. And because of the 3090 memory bandwidth is way above that of anything else on the market, including the A6000, it's just gonna make more sense to go with a 3090 at that price point for mining Ethereum. Now, where things could change, of course, is going to be within the other algorithms. Now, Ravencoin, my assumption is it would remain the same. We've talked about the Ravencoin in comparison to, of course, Ethereum. And with Kapow now, it is memory intensive, almost exactly like Ethereum. And that's why you saw the RX 580 start doing good on Ravencoin again. But the algos where it could be affected would be in Conflux and Cortex, as well as Aeon, because there are differences going on there. A huge note that I also wanted to make is that this memory isn't exactly the same as it is on the 3000 series. Essentially, it is GDDR6 ECC, which is error correcting, and that could impact, of course, mining performance. Now, it does appear to be faster on paper, of course, by the speeds that we just calculated, albeit by just a little tad there. However, it could be actually slower in practice and form due to ECC. It really just depends on how that's implemented and how, of course, the workload is interpreted coming from the Ethereum network. And I don't really know the answer to that because I haven't ever tested GDDR6 ECC. It's something new, I haven't tested it, and I don't know the answer to it. Now, if you guys have any kind of ideas on what that might mean for mining Ethereum, let us know in the comments section below. And if it's good enough, I'll pin it up top. Anyways, I wanted to cover this with you guys because it was a question that was asked and we were pretty spot on with the RX 6700 XT. So I figured we would just run the same calculations and see where we end up. I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here. Or, of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.